Hola amigos, Red Pill Biker here. I had an uncle who was a uh, World War II bomber pilot. Flew 40 something missions over Germany. And uh, he said amongst the different pilots and the flyers, uh, there was kind of a joke and you maybe you've heard it, but the joke was when you start catching flack, it means you're over the target. And on my last video, uh, where I was talking about a sexless marriage, I caught a little flack, nothing terrible, and, uh, you know, it was kind of to be expected. But it, it let me know that I'm over the target, and it, it motivated me to continue on with this series. So, in this one, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the traps that we fall into that keep us, uh, keep us in a really negative situation. But first, I'd like to read an article to you. I think you might find this interesting. It is unhealthy physically to be in a sexless marriage. Never mind the emotional toll it takes. Your self-esteem takes a beating over the years of neglect. Psychology Today estimates that roughly, roughly 15 to 20 percent of American marriages are sexless. Not low sex, but sexless. That 15 to 20 percent of married couples are living without sex, lonely and longing for real love and the opportunity to express that love through sexual intimacy. Now, that says 15 percent of American marriages are sexless, not counting the over 50 percent of unions that end in divorce. If you are unable to resolve your sexual needs with those of your spouse, seeing a sex therapist or counselor is often a good first step. Agreed. If, however, this, uh, this does not solve the issue, your next best step is to seek the counsel of a family law attorney. Everyone deserves to be satisfied romantically in a marriage. If you are not, divorce could be the right option. Interesting. Now, people may say, well, of course, that's what a man would write. You probably got that from MGTOW or something like that. Interesting enough, that enough this particular article comes from divorcedmoms.com. Divorcedmoms.com. Gentlemen, this is what women are saying to each other. And when a woman walks away from a marriage, especially under a condition like this, she's considered brave, strong, and independent. I, however, mentioned the exact same thing yesterday, and it's called toxic. So, when a woman expresses this, it's brave and strong, it's recommended by their own websites and their own articles, a man brings it up, and of course, well, it's toxic. So, you're in a sexless marriage. To me, I figured out there's only four options. There might be more, but they probably fall under one of these four. First of all, as the article says, you try counseling. You know, you, you have to be brave enough to look in the mirror and say, what role am I playing in this? And can counseling help? And marital counseling help? A uh, sex therapist. When I was in my counseling practice, more than a few times, the first thing I would say to a guy is, go get your testosterone checked. All right? And sometimes I'd meet his wife and I'd go, well, I kind of understand why you're not interested in sex. But nevertheless, look at it, analyze it, see what role you're playing in it, and then go to counseling. The truth of the matter is, by the time most people sought out my help, or most, and I've talked to many marital counselors to tell you, by the time they get in there, one or the other has already decided it's over, so they're just kind of sitting there and that way it gives them an out when they say, well, we, we tried counseling, all right? Second is to find love on the outside. In other words, cheat. You know, I have a moral problem with that. To me, I find that anathema to basic principles. So I'm not saying it's not something a guy should look into. I'm just saying it's certainly not anything I would ever recommend to a friend is that they go out and cheat on their spouses, whether that friend is a male or a female. If it's gotten that bad where you're thinking about hooking up with others, it's time to leave. The third one, and this is the one I chose and lived with for many years, is you just cuck yourself up. You just become a cuck. Throw out your manhood, which is uh, 
and it all leads over to the trap I want to talk about today, which is the hoop trap. And I'll be very brutally honest, I am a recovering simp. And I lived that way for a long time and I allowed this stuff to happen to me. And that's what this whole conversation we're having is about. It's not about living in the past. It's like going to an AA meeting. If you've ever been to a 12-step meeting, people get together, they're trying to stay sober, they're trying to change their lives, they're trying to redo their thinking. What do they do? They rehash what got them into that negative situation. So that's what's happening here. This is simply a 12-step meeting, guys, for recovering simps and hopefully hitting up some of the younger men so you don't have to go through recovery. And the fourth one is just to leave that dead marriage and enjoy your life again. So, hoop trap. What we're doing when we jump through the hoops is we're hoping things will get better. And the hoops kind of work like this. There's, you're not having sex, and so your partner, your spouse says, well, if you do this, sex will improve. Be more of a man, but, but be less toxic. Make more money. Why aren't you home more often? Help more around the house. You're not doing it correctly. Do this. Don't do that. Now, don't do that and go do these two things and blah, blah, blah. And pretty soon you are going to make yourself crazy trying to jump through all the hoops because they're never ending hoops. And the funny thing is those hoops get getting smaller and smaller and smaller to where you can't fit through them anyway. When the hoops begin, when the first hoop comes out, that's when you realize the honeymoon is over. You can't jump through enough hoops to make the woman happy. And here's a secret. Women aren't ever really happy. And so it's not even your responsibility to make them happy. All you're gonna do is drive yourself nuts trying to jump through the hoops. And what is the hoop? It's a form of control. But it's not just a form of control on one side or the other. She's laying out the hoops trying to control you to get you to move in a certain direction and you're jumping through those hoops attempting to get her to move in a certain direction. It's kind of a sick relationship because you're both trying to control and overpower the other, one by laying out these impossible things and the other guy trying to accomplish the impossible things. So here's my advice. Don't be a slave nor a tyrant to another human being. Remember this, guys. There is nobody to change but yourself. Life is hard. Don't make it any harder than it needs to be. Keep it real. Adios.